The truth about recovering from borderline personality disorder is that things are not going to be great all the time. That might seem super obvious to say out loud, but if I'm honest, there was really a time in my past that I believed that if I put in the effort and recovered, I would never feel so horrible ever again in my life. Hey everyone, I'm Zanny, creator and host of the BPD Bunch, and today I wanted to talk to you about one of the most important lessons that I've learned on my BPD recovery journey, which is how important it is to have realistic expectations of what recovery looks like. Like I said, when I was at my most symptomatic, I genuinely thought that recovery meant I'd be great all the time. Kind of makes sense that I thought that way because at the time I was really prone to all or nothing thinking, right? So I thought I was either going to have BPD or be totally fine all the time. One of the things I personally struggled with was assuming that people are always expressing exactly how they feel because that's how I am. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I am really not good at acting in opposition to how I feel. And so my assumption was, if someone acts okay, they must be okay. When I saw people who experienced some big grief and were walking around still able to function in their daily lives, I just assumed they must not care very much. It must just not affect them very much anymore. And that's what my recovery is supposed to look like. I should be able to withstand all of these things and just not care. It did not occur to me that maybe those people were in deep emotional pain and they were still able to go through their daily lives and get stuff done. That was a foreign concept to me. Now, I will admit that there is a kernel of truth to my expectation of recovery. There are a lot of situations in which I am much less affected. And most of those situations arose from interpretations that I had of people of my environment that were either not healthy, they were not effective, um, and would cause me to feel a lot of pain. So like one example is I used to really struggle with people disagreeing with me. If someone who was really close to me shared an opinion that I knew they knew was in opposition to something that I thought. I felt as though we had to find a way to get on the same page or I would be abandoned. Like, we have to agree on everything or you're going to leave me. And that belief caused me to feel really sad, really hurt, really angry. And I would lash out and try to force people to see things my way because I thought if they didn't, our relationship would be over. And so when I learned to check the facts and realized that I could disagree with somebody and that doesn't mean the end of our relationship, I experienced way less emotional distress in those contexts because I kind of dealt with that underlying belief. I could check the facts, see why that wasn't true and move forwards without being really hurt. And that concept applies to a lot of different kinds of situations. That's just one example, right? So there are situations in my life where I don't experience as much emotional intensity anymore. But there are some situations in life that are just legitimately difficult. And this is what brought on the idea for this video. This week, my cat wasn't doing very well. And he is an older cat. So when you have an older animal, anytime they get sick, it's a little bit like, oh my gosh, is this the end? It's not a totally irrational thought, right? I was really struggling with the um, negative emotional intensity that I was experiencing. He is fine, by the way, thankfully. Um, but this cat has literally been with me through the absolute worst parts of my life when I was in my early 20s. And losing him is gonna be really devastating. But that's not because I have BPD right? Like I actually don't qualify for a diagnosis anymore. But in those moments where I'm really overcome by negative emotion, I sometimes still fall prey to that thought like it wasn't supposed to be this way. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. And I thought that for a moment the other day with my cat until I thought about it more and I was like, you know, Given your attachment to this animal, given everything you've been through together at a time when 
Everyone else had to hold you at arm's length. You had this animal with you when you were crying, when you were sick, when you were a puddle on the floor. Of course it would be devastating to think about losing that animal. Like that doesn't have anything to do with having BPD. But because I had, I've had this really rigid, unrealistic, high expectation of what recovery should be for me, I still have moments where I judge myself a little too harshly for having a strong emotion about something because I imagined that I would never have those issues again. But the reality is that life is not without pain for anyone. And anyone who says they haven't experienced intense pain just hasn't lived long enough yet. It will come for all of us in one way or another. It's hard for me sometimes to accept the moments of difficulty because I really want everything to be like the situations I was talking about earlier, where there's something I can change about myself. I can change something about how I'm interpreting the situation and I'll just feel better about it. Unfortunately, <laughs> there are some situations where being skillful and being recovered is not about making yourself feel better. Because you're not, you're not going to be able to do something to make yourself feel better in the moment. It's about being able to tolerate that distress, to process that negative emotion effectively, and employ other skills to avoid a situation getting worse or out of control. Because when I feel intense moments of distress in the past, I used to really act out. And that really doesn't help the situation. It usually just creates more negative consequences that I have to deal with later that then create even more negative emotions that I have to manage. And it just becomes a big, vicious cycle. I do think it's important that if you're going through BPD recovery, that you give yourself some grace for feeling intense negative emotions when you're going through a legitimately difficult life situation. You don't need your super harsh inner critic telling you what a failure you are and how unrecovered you are for having difficulty because there are situations that would be difficult for most people. You know, not everyone has a really strong attachment to their pet like I do, but there are tons of people in the world who don't have BPD, who do have pets and are completely devastated when they die. I think it's been difficult for me to accept that pain is always going to be a part of life. I'm a professional escapist. I keep thinking that if I just think hard enough or work hard enough, there's something I'll be able to do to get out of feeling pain. But I can't. And that that's not a personal failing. It's not because I have BPD. It's because I'm a human. Earlier this week when I really thought there was something wrong with my cat, I wish I could say I, I told myself some beautiful thing that got me out of that moment. But honestly, sometimes when things are really bad or feel really awful, the best that I can do is just remind myself that everything is transient, the good and the bad. No experience I have ever had lasts forever. While that is really scary because I would much prefer things to be clearly all or nothing, here forever or just gone from my life, it doesn't work that way. So in the positive moments, I use the fact that everything is transient as a way to remind myself to really be in the present and enjoy it because I know it's not going to be there forever. And when things are really bad, I use it to remind myself that there will be an end to the pain. So it's important to have realistic expectations of what recovery looks like, because even though it is important to push ourselves to see how much we can grow so that we can live our best lives, it's also true that there are certain unrealistic goals that if we strive for them, we will inevitably be disappointed. So many of us with BPD are overthinkers. You do not need to give yourself another reason to overthink and hate yourself because then you turn what is a momentary pain into real suffering. So anyway, thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope that you got a nugget of wisdom to take with you on your journey. We will be back with a season five of the BPD Bunch dropping on October 2nd. Until then, we have a couple of intro videos. We have two new cast members who joined us last season and we're finally getting up their intro so you can learn all about their background story. Those will be up next week and the week after on our channel and look forward to season five in October. We will see you then. Till next time.